Hello to all of our Pleasant Green parishioners, our members, the congregation, and to all of our listeners. Uh, we count this a blessing that we are able to share with you again the Word of God through the study of our pathway, our Faith Pathway Study Manual. And this is Lesson 2 of Unit 1 for September the 13th, 2020. And the unit is Struggles with Love. And our title for our lesson is Love versus Bitterness. Our devotional reading is 1st Peter the 5th chapter verses 5 through 11 and our background scripture is Genesis 41 verses 14 through 57 and then our printed passage is Genesis 41 verses 25 through 33 37 through 40 and 50 through 52 and our key verse reads Pharaoh said to Joseph since God has made all this known to you there is no one so discerning and wise as you you shall be in charge of my palace and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. That's the Genesis 41 verses 39 through 40. Our lesson's aims are discover how Joseph's love for God and faithfulness helped him find success in Egypt. Aspire to remain steadfast in love and obedience to God when facing extreme hardships. Celebrate God's providential care in times of suffering. And we have three sections to our lesson and the first being divine revelation and then the second part being from prison to the palace and the last part being a new outlook now um, just as a backdrop to our lesson uh, to get a fuller understanding um, in the 37th chapter of Genesis it begins to unfold to us Jacob and uh, his sons and it brings forth Joseph and the relationship that was shown and practiced between Jacob and Joseph and how this affected the life of Joseph and also his brothers and it it gives us a inroads into the study of our lesson today and we realize uh, that in our lesson uh, Joseph was imprisoned uh, he was imprisoned by being falsely and unjustly accused of making advances towards Potiphar's uh, Potiphar's wife and and uh, we know the story but um, while Joseph was imprisoned 
there was a opportunity that unfolded to him which allowed him to demonstrate a gift that was given unto him of God and the gift was of such profound nature that it caused those that were considered to be foreseers and wise men and counsel it caused those around him to witness and to recognize the profound uh, purpose and the application of the gift that was given unto Joseph. And we will find in the lesson that now Joseph, and now we remember earlier in Joseph's earlier years, that he had a certain uh, a certain disposition about his gift that he was very proud and he was somewhat braggadocious he somewhat was uh, boasting uh, about this awareness that had been afforded to him by the Spirit of God and but uh, sometimes when God blesses us and we are not in the state of mind of maturity, uh, we don't always properly uh, utilize the gift that God has given us. And because of our misuse of the gift that God has given us, it causes uh, antagonism and it causes anger around others because it appears uh, that we are uh, more or less expounding upon ourselves beyond the limits that are placed upon us. And so when we look at uh, how Joseph matures in this lesson um, and uh, at later we see that Joseph does not try to direct the attention towards himself but he acknowledges for himself and others as to how he is able to interpret and to do what he has done with this gift but he acknowledges and then proclaims that it is not him but it is God so let's look at the uh, beginning of the lesson uh, because it uh, reveals uh, how God intervenes even into uh, the household of governments uh, that may be perceived as not being totally uh, just even in their own governmental dealings. Because we know that uh, Joseph was sold into slavery uh, in Egypt. And so uh, even when there are practices among governments uh, that would uh, not be perceived as being uh, just or righteous or kind or in any form suitable to the betterment of humankind. But yet, God still intervenes in behalf of things that are coming upon unjust governments and sends warners and sends a witness and sends an alert 
to try and prepare even uh, situations and positions that are not correct in their own practice. And so here we see that God is intervening in the behalf of Pharaoh of Egypt through someone who is in prison, locked up in Egypt, and he uses that individual to relay a message of warning to the head of the government. And so we know in the dream uh, in Genesis 41 uh, verses 25 through 33, uh, we see here that God sends a dream. He sends a message to Pharaoh and Pharaoh is troubled and confused and puzzled. Uh, but he he doesn't understand what the dream, what the warning is trying to tell him. And he consults with the wise consul and magicians and wise men in his own court. And yet uh, they are unable to unravel the message. But there is one who recognizes and remembers that Joseph was an interpreter of a dream for him while he was in prison. And this one consulted with Joseph and Joseph revealed a dream that he was having. And he recalls this and then brings to Pharaoh's attention that there is one who has a certain gift, a certain skill set, and able to interpret dreams. And so what un is unveiled to Pharaoh is, is that he is offered this warning that he's going to have seven real good years. Seven real good years. But then behind the seven good years, they're going to be followed with seven bad years. Seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And Pharaoh doesn't clearly see the picture, but then he's encountered with Joseph, and then Joseph reveals to him that what the God that I serve has done is he has sent to you a warning. He's He's about to do something, and what we look at here is, is that the same God that sent the blessing also sent the drought. But a lot of times, uh, even, in, even in the scriptures from verses 25 to 33, I believe uh, it's in verse 31, uh, but it talks about that the famine, the drought was going to be such that had not been witnessed in the land before. And because of that, because of the severity of the drought, the famine, that even though there was seven years of plenty, even though there was seven years of living high on the hog, that this drought was going to be of such magnitude that it was going to cause the people to forget about how blessed they were just seven years ago. It was going to cause them, it was going to cast such a shadow 
that they would go into almost like amnesia and forget that the same God had sent them plenty and filled their storehouses where they were overflowing. But as it is sometimes with the nature of humanity, when we are in eras and periods of plentiness, we don't plan for the rainy days. And so here, God has sent an interpreter. The one that was a dreamer is now the interpreter of dreams. And Joseph comes and reveals to Pharaoh that this is what God is saying to you. This is through our verses 25 through 33. And he explains to Pharaoh that both things are going to happen. Uh, the scripture uh, speaks of it and it says that the reason of the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms. And it was that the matter had been firmly decided by God and God was going to soon do it. So both extremities are both uh, the extreme orders. One uh, where we were going to be in an abundance and then another where we were going to be without the abundance and that the God was going to do both so the message was twofold and he was explaining to him that what you ought to do, Pharaoh, is look for a wise, discerning individual and then put him in charge of the land of Egypt. You don't want to get somebody that may just haphazardly handle things. Uh, you don't want to uh, get somebody who is not uh, prepared or someone who's not capable of taking on the responsibility that is beset before you. What you want to do is find someone who has demonstrated that uh, they have the credentials, they have the wherewithal to handle the situation that is before you. And you should be happy that God has sent this puzzling dream to you to warn you so that you would be prepared for what is about to take place. And the focus on for what is about to take place is, is that when, when Joseph reveals this to him, uh, he explains it and says to make it clear that it was God and not him nor was it the gods of Egypt who were able to provide the answer but it was God himself who intervened in the person of Joseph and revealed the warning to Egypt and to Pharaoh. I believe that it is in the book of Proverbs, the 18th chapter, and I think it's the 16th verse. And it says that your gift will make room for you and bring you before mighty men or bring you before kings or kings and rulers. And so here, Joseph's gift, which was given unto Joseph by God, fulfilled scripture, for it brought him before mighty men, kings, and rulers. And Joseph is aware of it and does not take credit for it himself. 
but makes Pharaoh and the wise consul recognize that it was not those statues that you pay homage to, that you bow to, that you worship. It was not those gods that are made by the hands of man. It's not the, uh, the, the entourage that you have around you, the so-called wise men and counsel that were able to uh, unravel and reveal to you what the Spirit of God was about to do. But it was God all by God's self that used me as a messenger to reveal to you what is about to happen. And now it is responsibility upon you as the ruler of Egypt to act upon the warning and the message that you were given. And in our second part of our lesson, uh, since Pharaoh recognizes that now he has to make a decision. He has to act upon the information that he's been given. And so then uh, verses 37 through 40 uh, tell us that then Pharaoh, uh, if the plan that was offered by Joseph, that it seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. So Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man, one in whom the Spirit of God is? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. So you, shall be in charge of my palace and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. Now, just look and, and we need to allow this to, we need to be sponges to allow this to just saturate our thinking our mind, our spirit, and prepare us for where God wants to send us to intervene. Now, uh, we currently in this nation are witnessing a devastation as well. And in, in, in fact, if we would look at the plagues that came upon Egypt, and then just look at America today, we would see similarities. And if we see similarities in repeated performances and repeated intervention uh, and spiritual presence of God moving again, then we need to avail ourselves to how God chooses to use us in this calamity as well. And so we recognize here that Pharaoh is wise enough to recognize that there is no one like Joseph because of the intervention of God's Spirit upon Joseph. And so he realizes that this is an opportunity that he can't avoid, that he can't bypass. And if he wants to be the recipient of the blessing of this warning, that he needs to act now. And a lot of times it's hard uh, for us uh, sometimes as individuals we get ourselves so caught up and so entangled and so entwined into certain situations until we don't find it 
among ourselves to step out of ourselves and beyond ourselves to receive the help of God. Sometimes proud, being prideful and being proud, sometimes arrogant, sometimes even ignorant, causes us to miss the opportunity that was before us, which would have delivered us from the condition we found ourselves in. But we did not adhere to the warning. And, and scripture oftentimes would say, uh, to those who have ears, let them hear what thus the Lord is saying. And we have to make sure doing this day and time uh, that we have our ears open our ears physically and our spiritual awareness open to hear what God is saying now our lesson concludes and it uh, it 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 reveals how this made an impression upon Joseph because Joseph is elevated. Joseph is, is re uh, removed from confinement from prison to the palace. He's, he's moved from being in bondage to being uh, rewarded to being free and to being elevated to a position of authority. Uh, some body needs to know that it doesn't matter how low or how far we fall, God is able to reach deep and bring us up high. And we need to recognize that no matter how dire or no matter how devastating the situation may look, God is still able. And what we find in the last section of our lesson referred to or titled as a new outlet is, is that Joseph is blessed with two sons. God has blessed him. He married the uh, uh, daughter of Potiphar. Uh, he marries her daughter. I mean, he marries his daughter, he, who was a priest, and was blessed with two boys, with two sons. And he named his firstborn Manasseh. Manasseh. And he named his second son Ephraim. Ephraim. And the naming of his children revealed the mindset and revealed the spiritual state that Joseph was in because his first son's name uh, in Hebrew meant forgetting or to forget and then his second son's name Ephraim means fruitful. Forgetting and fruitful. Joseph had gone through a phase of maturity and development. It occurred through some through some uh, very devastating situations 
But isn't it something how that when we think that we are at the lowest places and points in life, that when God brings us out, we become a better people, a better person than prior to our experiencing the trials and the challenges that God took us through. Sometimes, if it wasn't for the pitfalls, if it wasn't for the confrontations and the situations that we had to face, that we would not have developed the spiritual character that many of us now have had it not been for the devastations we had to meet in order to recognize that God was still with us. See, one of the things that we find in the beginning uh, uh, from 37 on up, uh, beginning at the uh, uh, 39th uh, chapter, when we read ahead of the verses of our lesson, is, is that even while Joseph was imprisoned, the people around him could see that he was still blessed and favored by God. They could tell by the things that were happening to Joseph, and they could see how the Lord was changing Joseph, changing his spirit and his demeanor. And so, as a result of these things, as a result of our sufferings, as a result of our pitfalls, we still understand that in those late, late night hours, when it appeared as though we were all alone, that the Spirit of God was still present. And as it was in the case of Joseph, those who witnessed him in prison realized that he was still favored by God. And as a result, Joseph named his children, his sons, in response to what he learned through this transition and transformation that God allowed him to forget what he thought was his suffering, which turned out to be a blessing to him. And because of that, he realized that he was coming in to being fruitful. He was about to abound to abundance. So as we close our lesson, uh, we just hope that something was lifted, something was said that gave us more insight into how God deals with us as individuals, collectively, as a people, as a nation, and even from a world view of how the Spirit of God intervenes in our behalf. As always, our prayer is that the hand and the Spirit of God would continue to intervene into our lives and on our behalf, and that everything that we do, that we say and think, that it would be pleasing and acceptable in the eyes of God. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.